Hello everyone, it's Shine Sprite Ditto, welcoming you back for more Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. We have finally made it to the bane of every Zelda fan's existence, the Water Temple. And I am going to take a minute to talk about the Water Temple. So what makes this temple so confusing to many is its construction. You can see that we are dropped off in sort of like a center room, and this kind of isn't that different from the Forest Temple. However, in the Forest Temple, there was only a set few ways that we could go. But you can see that with the Iron Boots, just this path alone has three different ways for us to go. And this is technically true for every single side of the room. Technically. Uh, it adds up. You can see that there's only one way here, and we can't reach that way, because our hookshot just is not long enough, no matter how hard you try. And there's no middle section here, like there is on the other side. And then there's more sections here, in a way. We have some locked doors. The problem with this is that we are given so many options right away, so that it can be confusing. And on top of that, because it's just like a giant square, it's very easy to get lost, to try to sort of forget which way you came in, which way you're heading out, left, right, up, down... Because you're going to be progressing up and down, left and right, going pretty much all corners of the dungeon. However, there is a very easy pattern that I know. I have this dungeon sort of memorized because there's a specific path, or not really a path, but a way that's really easy to always remember what to do. Even if you don't remember, even if you're lost, there's always a good way to remember how to progress this dungeon. So if you ever get stuck at any point in the dungeon, follow what I will be showing you guys. And it is also worth noting that this dungeon on the 3DS has a redesign. When you enter the dungeon, there will be lights that kind of direct you on where to go. The lights will lead all the way down to here, sort of pointing you out that this is where you need to go first. These lights exist to show you where you can change the water level if you get stuck, because that is going to be a mechanic of this dungeon. Changing the water level to have it sort of raise and lower to different floors, so that will allow us to progress further onto that floor. The first one will lead all the way down there. That's where we're going to be heading soon. And then the second one will wrap around into this building. That's where we're going to be going. And then the th that will lead to here. So it sort of directs you on the path of the order that you should go. But you shouldn't take too much stock in that, because the way I'm going to show you is actually easier. That is not going to be the only annoying thing of this dungeon. Because of course it's not. As you can see... Every single time that we want to take on and off the Iron Boots, we have to stop whatever momentum we have and equip them from the equipment screen. Every single time. Every single time that we want to take them on or take them off, we have to pause and remove them. Every single time. And it gets really annoying because you're going to be doing it like back to back to back. Uh, and... It just gets really obnoxious having to constantly pause and remove them. And you can see that with our Zora tunic that we got in the last part, we can completely breathe underwater, so we have no issue of that whatsoever. So, we have a lot of options available to us. We're going to drop down here, like I said, all the way. That's the entrance up there. So when you drop down from the entrance, you're going to head right. Now, the secret to this dungeon is that once we head right, we're going to head counter clockwise every single time we change the water level and i'll show you what uh, i'll show you guys what i mean by that but for now let's go ahead and head this way and <gasps> it's princess ruto or at least it looks like princess ruto oh you if i'm right link you're link aren't you it's me your fiance ruto princess of the zoras <laughs> link's face <laughs> I never forgot the vows we made to each other seven years ago. You're a terrible man to have kept me waiting for these seven long years. But now is not the time to talk about love. I'm sure you've already seen it. Zora's domain, totally frozen. A young man named Sheik saved me from under the ice. But my father and the other Zoras have not yet... I want to save them all. I want to save Zora's domain. You. You have to help me. This is a request from me, the woman who is going to be your wife. Oh boy. Link, 
you have to help me destroy the evil monsters in the temple, okay? Inside the water temple, there are three places where you can change the water level. I'll lead the way. Follow me, quickly! So you might think that this dungeon's going to be pretty simple. We just follow Princess Ruto, and she'll just kind of direct us all the way through the dungeon, changing the water level. However, that will not be the case, and you can see already how it's going to be a little annoying equipping and unequipping our iron boots, but whatever. So we'll head up here to Princess Ruto. We can see how the water level is going to affect each individual room. We we're on level 1, this is level 2, and now we've reached level 3. It's also worth noting that when we have our iron boots on and we're underwater, the only item that we can use is our hookshot. We cannot even use our sword, so this is going to be our main way of attacking when we're underwater. But, you can see that Princess Ruto is nowhere to be found. She is now completely gone for the rest of the dungeon. She has vanished. Was she taken by the monster of the water temple? Well, who knows, but we'll find out. We have to save our fiancé. And these guys... Spike. A lot of clever enemy names in this later half of the game. But they're just going to roll at you. You can get them to stop rolling by using your hookshot. And when they do that, and turn into boulders, you can use your hookshot again to just completely kill them. I believe you can also get them to stop rolling by just holding up your shield. And I, they're dropping bombs, so you should be able to bomb them as well. But getting that accuracy with the bombs is going to be a lot more difficult. Well, what do you know? Yeah, pretty much every single thing that you have kills them, but because we're going to be facing them underwater, I really recommend you just practice with the hookshot. Because, like I said earlier, once we are underwater, we have no way of attacking other than the hookshot. So, let's open our first big chest already. You found the dungeon map, and it is crazy how this temple looks exactly like Dodongo. Okay, it wasn't funny the first time I said it. It's still not funny now. I've said it in like every single dungeon. But we already have the map, and honestly, let's go take a look at that. You can see how this dungeon can be easily complicated. We have many branching paths from that center room on several different floors. Yeah, I don't blame anybody for getting stuck here, but I do have an easy way to get through this dungeon. Here we see the Triforce, symbol of the royal family, just like every other time in the game. Play Zelda's Lullaby. Pretty simple. Every time we see the Triforce, the royal family crest, we always pull out the ocarina. We always play Zelda's Lullaby to prove that we know them. I don't know why this temp the creators of this temple would be so adamant about playing a lullaby for a child when the temple is probably, like, thousands of years old, but who knows? Okay, so, as I just did without any sort of introduction, these torches are not lit. We cannot use our Deku sticks to light them, so the way we do that, same way as in the forest temple, we shoot an arrow through the fire and the flames. So once we angle ourselves up properly, we can light both torches and make our way through here. So you can see that we're sort of progressing the rooms now that we're able to walk on them, now that we've lowered the water level. And we can come up here, and... We have these little crab guys, just like the little spikes. And these things are called... Take it away, Navi. Shellblade. Pretty cool name, actually. But just like them, uh, just like the spike guys we fought earlier, you're going to want to get close to these guys, have them open their mouth. That's the only way you can attack them. And then you're going to want to use your hookshot. You can also use other items when their mouth is open. But again, just like the spikes, we're going to be fighting these guys underwater. So I recommend you get the practice of battling them with just the hookshot. And a small chest. And a small chest for a small key. We have one small key and we've seen several locked doors. Yeah. That's never a good sign. You can easily end up using this key on a locked door. However, the thing is, is that we cannot reach any other locked door aside from the locked door that we're supposed to go to because we're only on water level 1. And as you can see, these locked doors are not on water level 1. And in order to raise the water level to water level 2, we have to use our key. So, don't feel overwhelmed. There's only one way for us to go. And, so what I recommend you do like I said at the beginning of the temple, every time we change the water level, 
we are going to see if we can progress by... We're going to see if we can progress by going counterclockwise. So, we started up there, and now that we're in this room, we are going to make our way up. Just going completely counterclockwise through the room. But you'll notice that we need our iron boots. What fun it is. That might not always be possible. We can hookshot up here. And I know that this is not the right way to go, but I'm doing this for the sake of teaching you guys my way of getting through this temple. But you can see that we can hookshot up here, but we cannot hookshot over there, for our hookshot is not long enough, no matter what angle you get at. So it's impossible for us to use our key on that locked door. So, we've confirmed that this way is impossible. So going using our counterclockwise method, we're going to return to the main room. And pretty much any time you come across a room that is not possible, don't really don't, don't spend more than a few minutes in a room because you'll get the grasp pretty quickly on whether or not you can hook shot over there or something like that. But we've redeemed that this is not possible. So now that we've checked out this room, we're going to head this way. And we're going to take care of whatever's over here. Just continuously moving counterclockwise until we stop making progress. If we get an item or if we reach a dead end, then that's when we go back to the center room and continue moving counterclockwise. It's a real nice and easy method of progressing through the dungeon and always remembering where you're at and how to progress further. We've pushed this block down, which allows us to get through here. We have a way to go. Kind of. Because once again, we'll come through here. We'll remove the iron boots. You can see that pausing to equip and unequip the iron boots is really obnoxious. That's why I wouldn't say the water temple is hard, especially with this method that I'm teaching you guys. But it's really annoying. <laughs> and we have a tech tight. I don't want it to jump on me because we're going to have to do some platforming in a not platforming video game. It's a... He chose death over death. But we're going to take care of this switch here. Which will raise up the water. And this is why I tried to kill a tech tight. I do not want it killing me when I'm trying to make my way over here and knocking me down. And now you can see we are able to progress this way. And we're gonna we're gonna keep progressing this way until we can't any further. As soon as we drop down, we are going to ride the waves and equip the iron boots. Uh, on the 3DS version of the game, the Iron Boots are actually an equipable item and not on your equipment screen. So that makes it a lot easier because you can just have the tap of a button on the DS screen and you will have them equipped. You don't got to keep opening up a menu and scrolling through it and shifting through your items and a bunch of different stuff like that. But with our Iron Boots, we can see that there's a switch here. We're going to hit that with our hookshot. And we're going to use that to hook shot over here and make it to this side of the gate and we got more of these guys that's always fun yep you can see as i was saying earlier we are now underwater and our only method of attacking is the hook shot so if you were bad at practicing with it go practice some more because that is going to be our only defense going forward in areas like this and there we go and oh no, we're locked behind the gate. We cannot escape unintentional rhyming. But remove the iron boots and oh, there's actually a way up. We weren't completely trapped. And we have yet another small key. And to make this a little bit easier, Let's drop some bombs before we head down. God, playing the 3DS version is so much better because the Ocarina not only is... It, it's not an equipable item. There's a button that is always, like, you'll pull up the Ocarina. It's like an Ocarina button. It's mapped to a button the entire game. So you don't ever have to worry about, like, equipping it and unequipping it. And then you have four item slots <laughs> without having to worry about the Ocarina. So you can have your bow, your hookshot, and your bombs, and then equip the iron boots, which means you're never opening up menus in this dungeon. 
But let's ride the waves to climb back over here. And now that we can progress no further, we're going to do as the method suggests. We got an item and can't progress further, so we head back to the center room. By hook hookshotting our way up here and once again pausing to equip the iron boots. Oh my god. And this is the way we came. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to tell like what direction you're heading and which way you came from once we actually get the compass. But we have not made it that far yet. It Okay, we actually don't want to equip the iron boots. How could I forget that? We completely pushed our way into here. And... We hookshot our way up there to climb up. And when we are on land, these things are the most inconvenient way of moving, which is why even though you're going to be diving right back into water, you are going to want to unequip them anyway because it just wastes more time than just pausing the game. Now once again, we're going to continue heading counterclockwise. I already have my bombs equipped. What am I doing? We see a cracked wall. Let's blow it up. And <laughs> once again, pause to equip our iron boots. That is the worst part of the dungeon. It's not hard, it's annoying, because we are going to have to do that. But I still really like this dungeon and its construction. I think it's a very clever dungeon and really shows the complexity. Like, like a dungeon this complex for the first 3D Zelda game is kind of insane to me. Like, everything just fits together so well. And it is, it is hard when you don't, like, have a clear way of going through it. You can easily get lost and confused in this dungeon. But it's so genius with how everything just fits and like this was their first attempt at a 3d zelda it just it works so well like all the dungeons in this game are really just very well crafted especially for the first of its kind and that switch raises the water level not in the entire dungeon but just in this room and only temporarily and it, whenever the water level raises these statues will also raise which allows us to hookshot our way up here now, if you're playing the 3DS version, this switch is not behind the gate because it's super easy to kind of get stuck on how we hit the switch. There's no way to really do so. So the switch is actually out here if you're playing on 3DS, but on 64, you actually have to spin attack. And that allows you to slash through the fence. And it's the first time in the game, and it won't be the last, where we actually see that. And uh, just like in the 3DS version at later points, the crystal you do not do that they changed it for the 3ds but we have our very first sculptula for this temple we are definitely making progress that is very nice to have uh i don't there's definitely not as many as there were in the floor still it doesn't feel like it at least there's not a whole lot here i think there's like four okay there's five i just checked <laughs> but we have reached that end. So, let us go back to the center room. And now that we have gone every single way, there really is no other way for us to go than through the locked door. But that won't be a problem because we have two small keys. So when we come in here, we can look around and we see a hookshot panel. And on top of this hookshot panel, yet another symbol indicating that we can change the water level. And there's a gold sculpture up there, but we're going to try to get that in a little bit. So just keep that in mind for now. So you want to play, you want to pay close attention to this room because without a doubt, even with our method, this is where I get tripped up the most. We see that the water level rises and that this block has risen with the water. That is a very easy detail to forget. In the 3DS version, it actually zooms in on where the block was. Because the block left behind a small hole for us to fall down. This is where I get stuck the most in this dungeon. I always forget to go back down here and get what's down here instead of just immediately progressing forward. We can progress forward, but you will eventually get stuck without coming down here. 
you have to do this. This is not a little secret for you. This is required. So definitely pay attention when the water level rises like that. Because it could change the very room that you're in. And a room like that is not going to be affected by our method of progressing the dungeon. But, we can already see some enemies for us to fight underwater. That's always fun. And, let's try to get most of these guys before we can... Ah, shoot. Before they even start to attack... Yeah, the shield method works very nice. And... Come on. My drustic isn't being as precise as I wanted it to. I walked like in a full circle there. Okay, yeah, so let us remove the iron boots, because what else would we do in this dungeon? And we make our way up to a chest. A small chest, a small key. That's normally how it goes. So we have our second small key. You can see how if you do not visit this grotto, you will get caught up later. So definitely do not forget to fall down here. So now that we have two small keys again and the water level has risen, let us make our way back to the center room so that we can continue our method once again and move counterclockwise through the main room. Because... I mean, that's really all there is to this dungeon, is just continuously going back to the main room to move counterclockwise uh, in each direction until you can't or can't any further by reaching a dead end. And of course, we can't go the same way now that this block is lifted. We can't enter doors while underwater, so we'll go through this door. But do not forget that that uh, gold sculpture is still in that room, but we have no way of getting it right now. If you want to enter without... If you want to enter this room without raising the water level, or lowering the water level and then raising it again, you can of course just shoot through this flame and light the torch and that'll open the door. So you don't have to worry about raising the water level back to one, just to enter the door that's down there and raising it back to two. So, before we progress, we are actually going to drop all the way back down to the right. Because if you remember, when we were there to lower the water level down to the first floor, there's actually a platform on the second floor. So if we go back to where Princess Ruto was, and we unequip our iron boots, a phrase you're going to be hearing all throughout this dungeon, because, oh my god, why was this considered a good idea? There's been this cracked wall. This cracked wall was here when we were swimming up with Princess Ruto, so definitely... Gotta remember this, this is also where I tend to get tripped up, is going back to this room after raising the water level, because it's so easy to just jump back into the direction of the locked doors. But we have three whole small keys. Let's actually start using them. <laughs> because we are stockpiling these small keys. So let's just return to the main room and completely forget about revisiting all of these areas. Because, if you remember, we just didn't have a long enough hookshot to reach any of the other areas. Now, let us see what we can do. We go through here. And, we'll hookshot our way up here. It's weird they didn't just make this, like, uh, hooked. I'm gonna take damage from that for sure. Yep. It's weird they didn't just make this like a hook shot up room. They needed you to hook shot up to the ceiling for some reason. But place a bomb down, and there's a big chest here. Is this by chance maybe the the compass, the only other item that we see in large chests? And we beat out the timer. Let's go. And we got the compass, so now we can actually remember what direction we're facing. I'm just going to jump down here. And there's no other way for us to go, so let us head back to the main room. Yep, it's a lot easier to keep track of yourself now that you have the compass. Uh, you don't have to worry. There is nowhere for us to go this way. And we have our locked doors. 
and e yep you're also gonna see that we're locked out of going this way <laughs> if we try to go counterclockwise because we shoot that eye and our hook shot is not long enough to reach there and this gate will close before we're actually even able to lift up there so this way is also impossible for us to go but we have three small keys so I'm not really concerned about using any of them. So let's just make our way through this locked door. Let's start using some of the keys. And a tektite is going to fall down from the ceiling. You can already... I am so bad with the aiming on the control stick. I cannot wait to do the big pose in Hyrule Field. Which is probably going to be like one of the last things. That oh, I grabbed onto the ledge. Yeah, you aren't going to catch me slipping today, Tech Tight. And nowhere for us to go but through this door. And we're back in the center room. But we have the complete butchering of Ocarina songs. We have another place for us to use Zelda's Lullaby. And we have successfully risen the water level to the top again. So we are back. We are back to where we were whenever we entered the temple. But now we actually have small keys to work with. So, of course, going counterclockwise, we're not going to go through there. Because, I mean, why would we? That is the entrance that will just take us back out to Lake Hylia. Although I do recommend you use the entrance for some reason, for one reason. And uh, another thing is this room right here. So one thing I wanted to say about this room is that if you save and the water level is at 1, or the water level is at 2, and you save and quit, and then boot up your game again, you will be back at the entrance, which means you'll be in that area there. But whatever water level the game was on when you saved, if it was 1, 2, or 3, will be the water level when you come back. So keep that in mind, because whenever you jump down, and there, if it's water level 1, then you're going to fall straight down and take damage. So hold up on that control stick, or make sure you don't save when the water level is level 1, because you're just going to fall straight down. So would you like to save? No! Iron boots, equip. Even though I know that this is not the way that we need to be heading right now. We're going to want to set this up for later. If we come through here... You'll see that this is the room that we were trying to hook shot from uh, that we couldn't get to because we weren't fast enough. Now, why is this relevant? Why couldn't we have just gone this way? Well, it's because, if you might have seen this, we actually need to get behind this rock. But the way we're going to do that is we're going to have to pull it out so that it's facing this way. But now we can't push it or pull it. And we can see that there is a room behind that rock. There's a room for us to go to. So what we're going to have to do is when we have a way to get through that gate, we're going to enter from the other side and push the, the um, I said the rock, but the block, uh, towards to the left, so that way we can enter that room from the right. So we're going to have to keep that in mind, but we definitely want to set that up right now. And now that we have done that, let us go through the only way that we haven't gone through yet. Wow, already almost a half hour through this episode. That's kind of crazy. It feels like I just pressed record. Um, and we're almost halfway through the dungeon. Should only take two parts. I'm hoping it does not take over two parts, but... You know how it be sometimes. And this room. We have some keys for it when we enter. Take care of those real fast. And come on. And any arrows? Nope, no arrows in the chat. Alright, so now we're going through here. We have a gold sculpture on this wall, but we're going to need to be pretty close in order to get it. Like, we're going to have to do some serious angle work. Yeah, there is a way for you to get it, but I think we're just going to have to ignore it for now. And I don't know why I did that. It's over. <laughs> okay, let us not do that this time. Everything respawned. 
But we're going to ignore that gold Skulltula for now, because it seems that that's just a common theme of this dungeon, is walking by all of them. So let us head down here. This one is moving up and down, but we're going to aim here, climb up on this one, and we're just going to constantly aim our way up so we can climb up here. This is actually a really, really cool room. So let us head up here and continue shooting our way up. It's really cool because you can like waste your time and align your shot, but you got to try to be as quick and snappy as possible. And using our last... A uh, small key already. It's really easy to get tripped up if you did not have these. Now we're gonna want to hit that switch, which will cause the water level to rise in this room, which we're gonna use to hook shot over here. And before we do that, before we hook shot over there, we'll just fall back in the water. So we need to shoot that switch because we actually need to hook shot to the right of the statue my left my statue's right and we're going to hit this switch again which will cause this one to rise and we've successfully made our way over here and let's hit that crystal and it's not quite done yet because we need to climb on top of it Hit the switch again, which will cause it to rise, and we are now on top of here. And we got some tech tights and like likes. Just the way I like like it. And let's get rid of this guy because I don't want him gobbling me up whenever I go over there. Now, we're gonna hookshot our way over here past these spikes. And, yeah, you can jump on them, so be careful. We can see a refill on our magic. And this looks like a pretty important door. I really strongly recommend you save. And that's where we're going to call it for this part. So, next time on The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, we will hopefully be finishing up the Water Temple. I will see you guys then.